Decentralization refers to the transfer of control and decision making. There is enormous interest in, in, the, in the question of decentralization, both in policy circles and in academic circles. Welcome to the edge of nowhere, where we delve into the black hole of our reality. Hi, and welcome back to another episode to the edge of nowhere. Today we're going to be chatting about decentralization. Now, one of the most epic examples of this was Mad Max, whether it's the 1979 version with Mel Gibson or the 2015 version with Tom Hardy and Charlize Theron. We see this dystopian future where people are creating their own tribes and their own crazy kinds of councils to manage resources. I am your redeemer. It is by my hand you will rise from the ashes of this world. Now, while Hollywood may have taken us to the nth degree, that's something that's already happening today. Think about my own dear South Africa, where from the week of the 12th of July, 2022, there was looting and there was rioting. The problem is there was no police and central government resources and kind of control that were saying, well, we're gonna stamp this kind of thing out. Rather, citizens had to band it together to create their own kind of community policing, their own kind of community security. And while this may border on visual antiism, that's not really the message that I want to send today. Rather, I want to chat about today the breaking of the social contract between government and the common man in the street and the common people. Now, the social contract is pretty easy. It basically states that we pay a tax towards government for some kind of central allocation of resources and control thereof, whether it's security, whether it's infrastructure in, in roads, in water, electricity, and even just understanding that our resources are then centrally managed. The problem is for many states and many countries around the world, this social contract has been broken. The fact is, trust is being diminished in terms of how we believe our government can withhold their end of the social contract. And therefore citizens have to step into the gap to then uh, provide those services the government should. One of the things that I see happening into the future is a decentralization away from countries towards provinces or states and even into neighborhoods. It's no longer saying what are the country GDPs, but what are the city GDPs? What are the net contributions? And one of those factors is the rise of urbanization. We see this as an example. We see this in the best country within Spain, where it's no longer about having a country a government, but it's about having a separate state. Spain is divided into 50 regions. Each region belongs to one of 17 autonomous communities. Each Spanish region are groups of municipalities and are recognized by the constitution. Each Spanish region has its own character, history, and sometimes even language. But it's more than just the individual neighborhoods. It's more than just the individual countries. It's also recognizing that in the future, the identity may be decoupled from where we happen to be born. Our birth is just incidental. You don't choose where you're born. You just happen to be there. But moving forward, driven by digitization, we may have a different kind of identity. These identities may be based off different blocks. Now, these blocks may be whether they're actual uh, country blocks or maybe they're just off regional blocks, but it could be a different philosophy. In fact, what I believe moving forward is underpinned by technology, you may be a citizen of a virtual country. Think about Second Life right now, where uh, in the 90s and the early 2000s, there were new states appearing online. But in the future where we're going right now, it may be a question of identifying where do we want to belong to. And that may be based on philosophy. It may be around capitalism versus socialism. It may be East versus West. It may even just be a question of saying, well, I identify with a certain kind of demographic and a certain kind of philosophy. And so decentralization is not just the physical change of power. The physical location also depends on where you're born. But moving forward, it's no longer a necessity. It's about understanding where do you associate. So decentralization is a key theme, not just for governments, but even for the business community, by understanding that the power blocks are moving away from a central location towards a speed of response where you're agile, nimble, at the front lines of what the customer actually wants. So when you think back to the riots, there's an organization called the Gift of the Givers who stepped into the gap, they stepped into the void that was left by government that wasn't able to deliver services. And so the decentralization effect is one of private individuals and organizations saying, we are gonna control the narrative and we're gonna step in because we are embedded within this. Government is no longer embedded in many countries around the world where they live in their ivory towers. They're not part of the people, they don't take public transport, they fly in first class, they have no sense of connectedness with the common person. And so by understanding this, we can understand and start to see that organizations and the common person will step in because they're vested. It's their own communities. It's their own places where they need to change and take control. 
So today I hope you enjoyed our conversation around decentralization and a shift away from control, a shift away from whether it's a government control, or even business control, to decentralization. We will start to decentralize not only the operations, but we hope that the individual at that forefront takes control of their own futures and creates the future they want as they drive to the edge of nowhere. Goodbye, I will see you online.